everyone, Jess here with Everyday Science, and today we're down at the Archery Range, uh, one of my favorite places to be. And I thought I'd share with you a little bit of my basic understanding of the science of archery. As many of you who know me know, uh, archery is pretty much part of my everyday life. So I thought this would be fun. So the first thing I'm gonna do is knock my arrow into my bow. So when I pull the string back, what this is gonna do is it's creating tension, the potential energy or the potential for energy in the limbs of the bow. When I release that, all of that stored energy or potential energy is going to be converted into kinetic energy or the energy of motion into the arrow, which is gracefully going to fly off towards the target. Well, it's not actually completely graceful because there's this thing called the archer's paradox that happens. And it's basically when the arrow first leaves the bow, it does this fishtail motion. Um, it kind of goes one way and then to the other and it bends and oscillates in the air on the way to the target. This happens because the spine or the shaft of the arrow is pretty flexible and of course that depends on what kind of arrow you have. Now other things with the arrow when it's in flight, um, there's also the fletching or the feathers on the end of your arrow. And then there's also the tip, which creates weight at the end of it. Um, what the fletching does, it creates a kind of a spiral motion. And with the two things, these things help the arrow stabilize while in the air. Okay, so now the arrow is flying through the air in projectile motion. And Newton's first law tells us an object at rest stays at rest, but an object in motion is going to stay in motion unless an outside force kind of acts upon it. Now in this case, this outside force is gravity. So projectile motion is not only horizontal velocity or speed and vertical velocity, uh, but it's also this force of gravity kind of acting upon it. And this basically means is when the arrow's flying, if there were no gravity at all, it would just go flying, 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 off and off forever and ever and ever. But because we have gravity, the arrow's coming up, 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 but gravity's pushing down, 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 down until eventually the arrow peaks the top and then gravity keeps pushing down, pushing down until the arrow goes into its target. Now my bow is about 25 pounds, which is relatively light. Now the reason why this matters is because if you have a heavier bow, your arrow is going to travel faster to the target. So if I'm standing here with my 25 pound bow and somebody's shooting directly behind with a 50 pound bow, they're going to have a trajectory probably about here, whereas I'm going to exaggerate here. I might point my arrow a bit higher than theirs in order to reach the same target. And this is because the longer an arrow is in flight, the more time gravity has to act upon it. And so it's going to drop faster than a faster arrow. So heavier bow, faster arrow, lighter bow, slower arrow, and the more time that gravity has to bring that arrow down to the ground. And so the trajectory is going to be a little bit higher than somebody with a heavier bow. Now this was just a pretty basic overview of things. I did leave out things like friction and air resistance and a couple other things, but I just wanted to share with you a basic overview of my understanding of the science of archery. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Jess with Everyday Science.